Hey y'all, Tom, ND3N here, just like it says on the hat, and thanks for visiting my little shack in the corner for a ham shack chat about the wonderful suite of, of waveforms that you can find in WSJTX. This video presumes that you have WSJTX loaded and working and hopefully that you made a few contacts on it as well. Now, if you don't uh, or haven't, you'll have no idea what I'm talking about here. And that's okay. Just go do a search on YouTube for WSJTX setup, add your rigs model into the search, and multiple videos are gonna show up to help you get on the air with this fantastic program. There are a lot of overlooked features within WSJTX that not many people talk about, so I'm going to talk about them. Let's start with the settings page. We are going to start by going to uh, our file settings and bringing up the settings page. This brings us to the general setting, and the first thing I want to talk about is this selection here. Start new periods decodes at top. This will toggle between just showing the last set of decodes and a continuous scroll of decodes. Now, none of these will be effective. I'm gonna show you several of them before I actually click the OK button. Clicking the OK button will then uh, uh, import or change all the settings that I've made. The next one I'm gonna talk about is show DXCC grid and work before status. This will color code your decodes. And uh, right now we'll go over here to colors and it'll, it'll highlight using these colors. Uh, right now it's just showing CQ message and that's because I have my CQ only selected over here. But say you want to, you're a CQ zone collector or you just want to see the CQ zone, zones you would uh, select the CQ zone and new CQ zone on band. Uh, say you are not a grid collector, and that is your maidenhead grid, uh, so you could deselect these. I'm gonna leave those where they are. Next, I'd like to talk about reporting. Now reporting, this is, uh, you select this to enable your PSK reporting spotting. And PSK Reporter is a website that will show you everything you've worked. Now I've been running PSK Reporter for a bit here, so I'm going to just And you can see here, I got in the last 17, 18 minutes, I've, worked, I've been heard all over the US, a little bit in, uh, little bit in Europe, uh, out here in Japan, down in Australia, and down into South America. Uh, the other ones, other tags you see, these are monitors. So they are just constantly monitoring and skimming for frequencies. Uh, but they don't necessarily, they don't give a uh, specific tag. Uh, you could come up here, and I'm, I'm just gonna click this one, and it just brings up. So VO1, uh, VO1 IDX, heard me and uh, he is he is out there and it gives the rest of the information too so we'll just close and go on to the next setting I want to talk about which is the advanced setting the advanced setting uh, gives you some stuff up here which is really neat but what I want to look at is the special operating activity generation of FT4 and MSK144 messages. Uh, this is if you want to contest during a, during, a, uh, during an operating session. And we have a number of contests down here. Uh, the last one I worked, and it's grayed out, is this WW Digi Contest. You can also do Field Day and Ritty Roundup. Uh, the North American VHF Contest the EU VHF contest, and a fox and a hound. Now, some uh, contest organizers will allow you to use FT4 and FT8, but they are not on this list. Uh, they should tell you uh, to go ahead and use the WW Digi contest or the Ready Roundup message. 
and uh, you'll put in your appropriate, uh, the, you put in your field day exchange if you're doing that, or your ready roundup exchange. The problem that comes with this one is in the log file. This logs onto your normal uh, WSJTX log, and uh, it's a little bit uh, hinky, if you would, uh, in that uh, you, you'd have to separate your contest logs from your uh, regular operating logs. So I'm going to show you how to take care of that. For now, we're going to click OK and that's going to engage everything that I have kicked in. And you'll start to see these be color coded. And uh, you'll see that I am now streaming all the way down. And as this comes up, you'll, you'll see it uh, populate that way. Uh, but let's let's go uh, to find our uh, log, and that's uh, under File, Open Log Directory, and our log is this one right here, WSJTX underscore log. Uh, if you're doing a contest, what you want to do is append that. So we're just going to highlight it, and we're just going to type the word old in in the beginning. So now it's called old WSJT log. Now old WSJT log uh, will just, that's, that's what you've done to date. As soon as you start working your contest, a new WSJTX log will be formed. At the end of that, what you want to do, when you're done with your contest, what you want to do is go into, back to here, rename your WSJTX uh, log uh, .adi to something that would be familiar to you. So say you're going to do a field day. So maybe you would change that to uh, field day 2022. Yeah, obviously <laughs> You can name it whatever you want, just something that you're going to remember what it is. Uh, you can then go rename your old WSJT log right here, and we're just going to do this. It is now back to WSJT log, and you can go back to normal operations. You do have to be sure to go back to your settings and deselect that, uh, that uh, op, uh, special operating uh, and contest uh, selections. Now we're going to go to the WSJT page, the main page. There are a lot of selections in here that you'll want to be familiar with so that you can be more flexible with your operations. Don't worry, I'll bring it all together in the end. Now we're going to take a look at some settings on the main page over here. You'll notice that I am now color coding and first off if you uh, get confused about the, what the color code is like you say I, I don't remember what this this brown one is or what this pink one is. Well you can come up here you go to view color highlighting schemes and it's going to pop up a legend here. So you can see that the pink one is uh, new DXCC on band. So if I wanted to get him on this band, I'd do there. Here's a uh, Japan on the band. So th th that'd be interesting. This brown one is right here. It's a new grid. And uh, that's uh, down in Brazil. This one up here is over in Canada. And I think that's one of the ones I just popped up when I popped up the uh, PSK reporter. Uh, we'll close that. And just quickly discuss, you know, text, text even first. Uh, that that will uh, uh, cause you. It toggles between texting on uh, or not texting. TX even first causes you to uh, transmit on your even frequencies, which in uh, FT8 is uh, uh, the zero zero point and the zero thirty point of the uh, minute. 
on FT4, it's uh, 00, uh, 0, 015, uh, 0, 030, and 0, 045. The odds are uh, on, on uh, FT8 are going to be uh, 15 and 45. So if you've deselected that, you'll be transmitting at the 15 second point and at the 45 second point. Uh, on, uh, on FT4, it's going to be at the seven and a half second, the 22 and a half second, the 37 and a half second, and the 52 and a half second points. Uh, enough on that. Uh, in selecting uh, these, we're going to get into a little bit more uh, when we get into looking at the waterfall, but you can quickly change your frequency uh, here. So say I have just worked somebody over here. There we go. And um, So here I am over at 2769 and say I want to listen to someone uh, who is over here. Well, uh, you just come up and click and that will move your receive over to here. Now you, you've listened to them or you worked them or say you were calling CQ and you went straight over and because you have your whole TX frequency on, it held you at the TX frequency and put your receive over here. At the conclusion of that, you can move back. You know, once you've logged it, you can move them back just by clicking that. But say you uh, want to, uh, well, we'll get to that later on. Auto sequence is uh, where, where you've seen it cycle through a CQ to answering a CQ to uh, automatically progressing through all of this. Uh, call first is interesting because what that does is say you're calling CQ and you get a bunch of people come back to you. The uh, first person that calls you back or the first person on that list is going to be someone who is calling you on your frequency. Secondary is everybody else on the list. So uh, it, having that call first on is good when you're running CQ. Uh, now uh, let's move over and take a look at the waterfall. It is my opinion that there are three types of FT8, FT4 operators, and a lot of the other uh, WSJT programs. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with identifying with any one of these three. It's your shack and you are the control operator. So you get to decide what kind of operations you want to do. Now the first type of operator, he just wants to call CQ and let people come to him. If this is your type of operation, then you'll probably want to make the hold TX frequency selection so that you'll stay on a single frequency and let whoever receives your C call, uh, CQ, uh, come to you. The second type of operator wants to be the ham that doesn't call CQ. Rather, they will keep an eye on the band activity and jump to the CQs of other hams. For this operation, you'll want to have your hold TX frequency off. And here's why. When WSJTX decodes the band activity, and when multiple operators are replying to a single CQ, they'll be sorted first by people calling on the CQ frequency, and secondly, everyone else. With your hold 
TX frequency turned off, you'll be transmitting on the CQ frequency. So you'll be one of the first ones uh, to be called on the list. And if the CQer has call first enabled, then you'll be at the top of their list to answer. You'll get in quicker. You don't have to wait for everybody else to go through. You should also have the color coding in your band activity chart turned on so that you can quickly spot stations that you really want to work. And to make sure that you don't work someone that you've worked before. Here's a tip. They'll show up in green. Highlight. The last type of operator is the eclectic. Uh, this is the person who sometimes calls CQ or sometimes uh, answers a CQ. It's a little bit of the best of both worlds. Uh, and, and by the way, that's the way I like to do my operations. I'll set it on CQ, go through for a while, and when I think I've worked all the CQs, I'll go over to the band activity list and start picking people off that list. On the waterfall, we already talked about our brackets a little bit, they're up here. It's the uh, red one and the green one. Uh, the red one is your transmit, the green one is your receive. Now moving around, if you just want to move if you want to move both of them, you want to hold down the control button and click where you want to go. And you'll see both of them will move. Now, if you just want to move the receive, you just come up here and click without touching your keyboard and you'll see your uh, receive frequency will move. Now, if you want to move your transmit frequency, uh, we're going to come over here, we're going to hold down the shift key and our transmit frequency moved over. Uh, the next thing we want to talk about is uh, down here, the adjustments for your uh, specifications uh, or for your, uh, your uh, waterfall itself. Brightness is the upper left one and you can take that from, uh, you can take that down to where it's basically black or all the way up to where it is uh, basically washed out. I'll find it, and now the other one is right next to it. It's on the right side on the top, and you can do the same thing. You can brighten up or darken up the background. And use both of those to find, find uh, something that is comfortable for you to watch but still gets you all the information. I like to have it so I can see, clearly see where people are transmitting and have it just start to turn red or uh, this color scheme. Speaking of color schemes, uh, you can change it. Down here is something called palette. Right now I'm using the default setting, but if you wanted to use brown, you can do that. There's your brown. Uh, you have multiple selections in here and you can uh, go, oh, we can go negative. Okay? If that is what works well for you, that's good. But play with those and see what works good for you. Uh, I have found uh, either the DigiPan, which you'll notice is very similar to the default, or the default itself to be the one that I like. And this is after Oh, gosh, probably five years of playing on this program now, uh, long before FT8 existed. Uh, but this is what I found works the best for me. Uh, your mileage may vary. I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I've enjoyed putting it together. Thanks for dropping by my little shack in the corner for a ham shack chat about the WSJT uh, X software. And we, yes, we had a little extra emphasis on FT4 and FT8. If you're looking to watch some more of my videos, might I suggest this one right here. Please take a moment to give me a like by popping that thumbs up icon. Please leave a comment with any tips and tricks that you've picked up in your WSJT uh, adventures. And uh, any suggestions you have for more videos that you'd like to see from me or if you just want to drop in and say hi. 
Please share this content with friends and on other ham related social medias. As always, at your service. 7-3, I'm Tom, ND3N, and I'm out.